Welcome to A-Level Physics, looking at electromagnetic induction. In my previous video, we looked at inducing magnetic fields, the magnetic flux, the magnetic flux linkage, and a brief insight on Faraday's law, which I'll be carrying on with in this video. Firstly, we will start with an example of a conductor cutting lines of flux. A plane of wingspan 30 meters flies through a vertical field of strength 5 times 10 to the minus 4t. Calculate the EMF induced across the wingtips if its velocity is 150 meters per second. So here a plane flies through a magnetic field and we are asked to find the EMF induced across the wingtips. Well to do this we need to calculate the area swept out each second by the wings. Multiply that by the field strength B and you have got the flux swept out in a second. Alright. So the area is equal to 30 times 150 and uh, equals 4,500 meters squared. Okay, so the flux is equal to B times A, which is also equal to 5 times 10 minus 4 times 4,500 which is equal to 2.25 WB so each second 2.25 WB of flux is swept out so the EMF induced is equal to all right so E EMF is equal to Delta Phi over delta t, which is equal to 2.25 over 1, which is equal to 2.25 volts. Alright, this method leads us to a simple equation for the EMF induced by flux cutting. It is E equals B I V. All right. Where B is the magnetic flux density T, I is the length of the conductor cutting the field m, and V is the speed at which the conductor cuts the field in meters per second. Remember, it is only the motion perpendicular to the field that induces an EMF. Now we will look at an example for, of a conductor in a changing magnetic field. A coil of wire of area 2 cm squared with 20 loops is situated in a magnetic field. The magnetic field changes from 20T to 10T in 2 seconds. What is the EMF induced in the coil of wire? So, the answer is E is equal to N times delta magnetic flux over delta T times the magnetic flux again which is equal to BA yep then E EMF is equal to N times A which is equal to A sorry delta B over delta T which is equal to 20 times 2 times 10 to the minus 4 which is also well times 20 minus 10 over 2 all right which is equal to 0 0.02 volts All right, but what happens if a coil is rotated in a magnetic field? If a coil is spun in a magnetic field, the flux through the, uh, the coil changes. The flux through the coil is greatest when the coil is perpendicular to the field and zero when the coil is parallel to the field. If the coil keeps spinning, the flux varies like a sine wave. So, I'm just 
gonna try and draw this. Um, please excuse my terrible drawings. <laughs> um, so you have something like this. Actually, that's not is it too bad, is it? So again, time and the magnetic flux. I'll just put M F. All right. This is similar. Draw this again against time. You get another sine wave, and that's the induced EMF. I put I EMF. All right. So the magnetic field must be changing to induce an EMF. When the gradient of the graph is zero, for instance, at the top of the peaks and the bottom of the troughs, the magnetic field is not changing, so no EMF is induced. The magnetic field is changing most rapidly at the steep bits of the graph when it crosses the x-axis. These produce maximum values of EMF. So the, magne sorry, the magnetic field and induced EMF are 90 degrees out of phase. This principle is used in an alternator, which is a generator of alternating current. So if you move a conductor through a magnetic field, you always induce an EMF. If there is a circuit available, the EMF will push a current through, the it, through it. And if there is no circuit, you will get, get an EMF, but you won't get a current. Don't forget those.